Howdy y'all! Welcome to Adventures of Kindle. Today, we're going to the small community of Santa Margarita, California. It's a small town with a wonderful history, and I can't wait to share it with you. So come along, let's go to Santa Margarita. Oh, we made it to Santa Margarita, and in style. Let's get off. The story of Santa Margarita is quite a long one. From around 6,500 BCE, the Santa Margarita Valley was a meeting place for Northern Chumash and Southern Selenian Native Americans. In 1776, the Del Anza expedition traversed the Cuesta Grade into the valley. And Father Juan Capero Serra founded Mission San Luis Obispo de Tolosa. After the crane Mission San Luis Obispo, Father Serra realized that a cestacillo or submission was needed. So Santa Margarita de Cortonana Asesia was founded. It was named after the Italian saint Santa Margarita de Cortana. After Mexico's 1822 independence and the 1830s mission secularization, Joaquin Estrada became the owner of the Rancho Santa Margarita in 1841. Estrada was famed for his rancho hospitality with rodeos, barbecues, and fiestas. After downturns in the economy and personal debts, Estrada sold the ranch to the Martin Murphy family in 1860. Patrick Murphy worked to restore the rancho to a working agricultural ranch. While the Wells Fargo Company had a stage stop here in the valley. The town started in 1888 when Southern Pacific made a stop here from Templeton. It was the terminus during construction of the coastline around Cuesta Grade and the town boomed because of that. And the little town of Santa Margarita became a bustling place. However, over the years, the town became more and more quiet and it slowly became a small agricultural town where the majority of the income came from farming or ranching, with the latter having its livestock being shipped by Southern Pacific to markets in Chicago. In the Roaring Twenties, Santa Margarita saw a renaissance. The El Camino Real was one of the primary roads for seeing California. However, after Highway 101 bypassed Santa Margarita in 1956, the town was quiet again. And the town remained that way, with the occasional visit from motorcycle gangs in the area. Today, the town is a quiet artist and family community. Now that we've learned the history of Little Santa Margarita, let's go explore the historic Santa Margarita Ranch, where every inch of the ground has a bit of history. Case in point, a portion of the El Camino Real. Before Highway 101 was built, people traveled on the El Camino Real. This was the road created by Father Serra as he established his chain of 21 missions. As we get closer to the buildings of this ranch, there's something I want to tell you. You can rent this place out for special events such as weddings. And believe me, having a wedding here is special, especially with all the neat surprises in store. Let's go check out one. This old unassuming barn. Here's surprise number one. This barn used to be an old mission church. Come here, I'll show you the adobe walls. It's rather fascinating to know that this old unassuming barn was built on the remains of an old mission church. Especially when you consider that in 1909, this is what it looked like. Let's go inside. and see the splendor of this building. I'm in awe of this structure. This will make a great banquet hall for any wedding or for the main ceremony, the appropriate building. While this building is amazing, the history doesn't end there. Let's go check out the old Wells Fargo building. You wouldn't think much of it, but this used to be the Wells Fargo Station in Santa Margarita. Now you may have noticed these railroad tracks. 
This is the Pacific Coast Railroad. Named after the legendary narrow gauge railroad of the same name that operated in the area. This railroad has everything. Plenty to look at while exploring the ranch. The locomotives and freight cars are amazing, but the biggest surprise of them all are the coaches. Original Santa Fe and Disneyland passenger cars. Let's go inside this one. Painted Desert. I'm in one of the original Santa Fe and Disneyland coaches from 1955. These cars were built at the very year the park opened. The only reason these cars are no longer used is because of loading capacity and time per Disneyland trains. And now they're here in Santa Margarita. With all the ornate decorations throughout the car, I can only imagine what it was like to ride this while at Disneyland. Sounds to me like we've reached the wilds of Adventureland, where you just might run into a lot of savage critters out there, including lions and tigers and tiki birds. Everybody best be on the lookout. You never know just what may show up. And here's the ranch's other equipment, including fire trucks, traction engines, and old school off-road vehicles. Speaking of vehicles, this place is great for car shows, especially drag racing on the airfield. Off they go. And that was awesome and retro to watch. Boy, the ranch was fun. But I think it's time we head home. Did you enjoy our time at Santa Margarita, folks? I did. I enjoy exploring the historic Santa Margarita Ranch, especially with the Santa Fe and Disneyland coaches being there. It was a fun experience exploring that place and seeing all that history in one area. Well, that's all the time here on Adventures of Kendall. See you later, folks, and may your gifts bless the world.